really hard. It's uh, it's because for me, my career is gonna be as much with the with the with the with the franchise as with the national team. You know, it's there's titles to win with both, and uh, yeah. Miss it, missing the national team is just like missing the season with the Spurs. It would be, it's kind of crazy, you know. Victor Wimbanyama not repping France at the World Cup wasn't an easy choice to make at Big Board Sports. <laughs> Earlier this week, news came out the Spurs rookie Victor Wimbanyama will not represent France at the 2023 World Cup. He's going to skip the tournament scheduled for August 25th through September the 10th. And that was a very tough decision for him, but most likely a necessary one due to all the basketball for him on the horizon. Today, during his media availed Spurs practice facility, he was asked to explain why. You know, it's uh, I had a long season uh, with, the, with the Mets 92. I'm going to have a long season with the Spurs and uh, there's the Olympics after that and I just think that more than, that more than two years without rest is, is, uh, is too big of a risk, you know. There's a really big events coming up <clears throat> like the Olympics that I really, really don't want to miss and uh, so to be able to be available for the national team for the next uh, I don't know how many years uh, I feel like I need to miss this one. Victor will also miss the California Classic that tips off July 3rd in Sacramento. Johnson Jaguars quarterback Ty Hawkins is one of the top QBs in the class of 2025 and recently he gave his verbal commitment to TCU. Last year as a sophomore, Ty passed for nearly 2,200 yards, rushed for 892 with 37 total touchdowns. He led the Jags to a 7-4 overall record and the first round of the class 6A D1 playoffs. He's a four-star QB and certainly on the rise. Today we met with him to talk about his verbal commitment to the Horn Frogs. I just love the school. I love the coaching staff and everything about it. I feel like making my decision a little bit earlier is a little different for most people, mm -hmm. but I, I really like it and I think I could stick with it for the rest of my years of high school. And then when I get to TCU, I'll, I'll be able to like build my team around me because I'm already committed so I can try and get other people to commit also. So I think it's just like a, I think it's also like the perfect fit for me. Okay. Just their scheme that they run and our scheme we run at Johnson, it just, it just fits. So you don't feel it's too early for you to commit and you still have two years left in high school? No, sir. I don't feel like it's too early at all. Okay. Um, I feel like now that I'm committed, the, the bond with the coaching staff and the OC, Coach Bryles mm -hmm. and me is just going to grow and get better and better. And with time, it just like, it's going to be good. Yes, sir. Can you expand on that relationship with Coach Bryles? Uh, I read some stuff online that you two really connected. Yes, sir. Um, so when like he came to the school for the first time, um, we talked. I really liked him, and he offered me then. And then when I took my visit, I, I really enjoyed him. Me and my mom loved him. Ty says the recruiting process was kind of painful and that he's glad it's over with. A lot of yes, sir, no, sir. Very polite young man. Yeah, very polite. Yes. I like that. And a good quarterback as well. <laughs> Thank you, <Larry>. sir. <laughs> You're welcome. Coming up next, Puro Picks. Stick around. Puro. All right, it is Friday. It is time for Puro Picks, a rundown with one of our favorite local influencers of all the wonderful things to do here in San Antonio this weekend. Stephanie Guerra, thank you as always for joining us on Friday. And I'm very excited about this first event. Yeah, and like I was saying while we were in commercial, I'm pretty sure there's some conspiring going on between mm -hmm. Stephanie and Myra because there's liking the Golden Girls, then there's worshiping the Golden Girls. And Myra, <laughs> like, you know... She's got, a B. I'm a, I'm a She's got a B. Level? Arthur altar. Well, thank you for being a I hope a to friend, one day, Myra. Oh, <laughs> you are so welcome. I hope to one day travel <laughs> down the road and back again yeah. and dress like B. Arthur. I'm going to be a friend to you right now. Oh yeah. Because right. we got a mic issue here. Nobody I think you're fixed. Me. That's all that. That's all that we care about. There, now there it's we, now go. we go. So let's talk about this Golden Girls yes. thing. So, um, awesomely enough, this weekend at Woodlawn Point. There is a performance of Thank You for Being a Friend, a Golden Girls 
parody pride. So maybe it, we are poking fun at it, but we still love it. So who doesn't love the Golden Girls? Yes. Thief? Everyone yeah. loves the Golden Girls. You, not, you love them. You've I'm been very forced fond, to hear about them enough. Them. <laughs> it's tonight through Sunday, and tickets are still available. You can look on Woodlawn Points, social media, or website. But take your girlfriends or your guy friends and All go right. check it out. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we're still having, are we still having mic problems oh. with stuff? Are we? It's it's on. It's Her heat. microphone's on. It's We've checked. I was a friend. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to step closer okay, to you. We'll so we're going to talk right, about girls over way. here. Yeah, let's do it this Come way. Come in, friends. All right, Come so let's talk, let's talk about uh, something that's happening at the San Antonio <laughs> Museum of Art. Tonight. Yes, so um, this kicks off this week in a new exhibit called Still Brewing Art. And it is going to be this amazing historic to modern day exhibit of beer culture in San Antonio because San Antonio Museum of Art used to be the Lone Star Brewery, right? The original mm -hmm. Lone Star Brewery. Um, so it still has a lot of the pieces there today, but they got a lot of local and regional artists to create beer themed art exactly specifically for this exhibit. It starts this weekend, but you'll be able to check it out for a while. You can look on San Antonio Museum of Arts uh, website to find the exact dates. But the kickoff is this weekend. They have a lot of special events going on. I with like it. that beer theme. We art. love the beer. Cheers. Yeah. Exactly. See, there's something here for you too. Lone We're talking I'm beer right. culture. Yeah, it's, it's more Pearl than beer, <laughs> Lone Star beer, and now we have all these great new beer breweries also. Okay, I'm here for this next one too. A citywide coffee crawl. Yeah, this sounds amazing and definitely yes. worth waking up for. Um, over 24 coffee shops are participating in the crawl. You can buy a pass for $8 and get samples from as many locations as you can go to in that list of 24. Oh, wow. Um, so it's being hosted by Big Vibes Art House. Um, and I'm not going to name any of my favorite coffee shops, but I will say that this goes all over town because I don't want I don't want any hurt feelings. But there's so many great ones. There are so many. But you many. all can say your favorites if well, you want. Can you give oh, us man. like? Well, I don't know who's participating. Yeah, oh, there's a lot man. of good ones. Uh, yes, there. I'm afraid if I say so, say one, it it's may 24. not be on the list. <laughs> Listen, all of these coffee shops fuel this newsroom. I can uh, tell you that much. That's right. That's true. <laughs> well, maybe I'll see you there then because okay. I'm I'm already feeling it. I need some more caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got an uh, When the Sun Goes Down with DJ Teardrop. There's a lot of DJ names on here. So yes. Is this one also for you? For this, is, this is, <laughs> sounds like it's for me. Okay, I yeah. thought so. Also yeah. another uh, Golden Mijas event. It's all Latina DJ lineup at the Lighthouse Lounge. It's called When the Sun Goes Down. So I'm going to get this right. DJ Teardrop, DJ Danny Gal, DJ Suavecita, and DJ Heavy Flow. <laughs> so it's at the Lighthouse Lounge. Lots of great um, Latina DJs, yes, at the Lighthouse Lounge over by Woodlawn Lake on Cincinnati. Um, there's going to be a lot of like Chicano soul, oldies, dance, a lot of uh, women-led music. It's going to be a really fun dance party. And you're right by the lake. You know, it's such mm -hmm. a beautiful space to be right out there at Lighthouse Lounge. Love it's it. It's going to be a great event. Yeah. All right, we got more <laughs> brews to talk about beats and brews for this next event. Yes, yeah, so I know I mentioned this before, but I do think it's a really fun series out at Santico's in Cibolo. It's free in their beer garden, and the end of the series is tomorrow, and the guests are Autumn Michelle and Nikki Diamonds, which they are an amazing duo. Um, they Americana, soul, uh, country, Texas country. Nikki Diamonds was in a band called Lonely Horse, which was making it to a national stage for a while, Nashville, a lot of places. But that is a free show tomorrow at Santico's. And I know um, just yesterday, there was some big news about Santico's and they are expanding all over the country and they're on track to be like the eighth largest movie theater. Which is unusual when most, country. when, you know, some movie theaters are shutting right. down. Yes. Shutting their doors. Yeah. They're expanding. Mm -hmm. So they're adding on like 300 new theaters. Um, you know, I believe they, they bought some theaters from another group, but that's exciting because I love Santicos. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> All right, the official 4th yes. of July celebration, the final thing we're going to We gonna cannot forget about 4th of July. No. So on Tuesday, which is weird because people will be off Tuesday, not mm -hmm. Monday, you can celebrate at Woodlawn Lake Park, close to the Lighthouse Lounge. All day celebrations, of course, we're going to have the military bands, local music. There's going to be a lot of actually water performances, things going on all day long, but it is officially put on by the city of San Antonio, HEB, and the San Antonio Parks Foundation. And that's where the fireworks will be because everybody gets confused and mm -hmm. still thinks that they're downtown yeah. at Hemisphere, but they will be over at Woodlawn Lake. So get there early. 
Um, take some lawn chairs, take your friends, and get ready to have a good time. Yeah, and take some water and some sunscreen. Yes. Probably both good ideas yeah. as happy well. And happy 4th of July to everybody. Yeah. Yes. It, it's a great holiday to remember. How's mm -hmm. Papa Perot doing? Papa Perot is amazing, okay. and he... He loves you because of all the Father's Day things. Well, that's why I'm giving him a shout out. That's why I'm giving him a shout out. <laughs> we need to bring him on someday. I think we do. he'll really like that. Yeah, that'd he be could fun. be like your sidekick. Yes. He would I like that. He's a ham. He was in the fire department for San City of San Antonio for a long time, and he always ended up on camera somehow. So we definitely got to bring him on. So it right. runs in the family kind of a thing? <laughs> Very true. Okay. That's where you get your shyness. Yeah. Should we head to the lanai now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll Bye, see you later. All. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, so we've, get to, we've just given you the layout of things you can do mm -hmm. for this holiday weekend. And, of course, you know, how much time you want to spend outside could depend on how much water you have to bring with you. You bet, Adam. Yeah, you got to be prepared for it. It's that time of year, but it's not as bad as it was weeks past. We're seeing some improvements. I mean, if you could handle what we had uh, earlier this June, You'll be just fine in the days ahead, that's for sure. 99 currently, by 9 o'clock we'll be down to 90. Midnight, 82 degrees. And temperature-wise, tomorrow's going to be very similar. We will see a downward trend in temperatures. We'll get to that, along with how the heat high is impacting smoke in the air and relative to us, along with when we could see some dust from Africa in just a bit. Funeral services for a woman killed by three SAPD officers last week were held today. Family and friends gathered at San Fernando Catholic Cemetery to lay Melissa Perez to rest. The family's attorneys say they are still working on a lawsuit and they plan to file it in federal court. The person convicted for the killing of Trinity student Kaylee Mandati sentenced today. This afternoon, a judge sentenced Mark Howerton to 20 years in prison. Howerton found guilty on a lesser charge of aggravated assault earlier this month. Tonight, SAPD looking for two people who they say killed a 27-year-old man. This happened last night around the Leon Creek Trails close to Border Brook Drive. Officers say the man was shot after two men tried to rob him. SAPD still investigating. The Texas Supreme Court ruled today that Governor Greg Abbott's COVID-era ban on local mask mandates was lawful. The court's ruling says Abbott had the legal authority to forbid local governments from requiring residents to wear masks. That's your 60 second recap. Let's turn to the forecast now. And Adam, I heard you say this earlier, we briefly hit 100 today. We did. And, you know, I was just looking at some numbers and some information and get this. So, you know, we've been up to 105. Las Vegas had their first 100 degree day this year. Today, they hit 100. What? It's been a 294 day stretch where they haven't hit 100, which I believe is a record stretch for them, right? Fascinating. Well, that heat high, it's parked over us. All right, let's get to the temperatures because the heat high's moving out. Yeah, it is. Look at that little downward trend. Remember, we're going into early July. We're not supposed to see big drops in temperatures. And look at the average high, 94. We'll be closer to it, but not quite there by next week. Right now, 104 Catula, 102 Del Rio. Those are the hottest locations as usual on this map. 96 in Gonzales, Kerrville, 94. As we widen out the view, you see this big red area of mid and upper 90s with some highs around 100. This is over Arkansas, basically the deep south here. And the upper level high associated with it is starting to move eastward. That's why that heat is intensifying there. And it's going to continue to move eastward as well and weaken. And already we're seeing some changes in Texas as a result of that heat high loosening its grip and moving away. It's opening the door for a look at these showers and storms. West Texas, we're talking from Big Bend all the way up to Lubbock and into the Panhandle, Amarillo, eastward into Oklahoma as well. Most of the severe weather farther to the north up the plains. It's on the north end of that ridge. Now this upper level high, that heat high where it is and where it has been for several weeks has actually kept a lot of that Canadian wildfire smoke away from us. We, you've seen the stories. Midwest, midsection of the country and especially New England getting that smoke. But due to the clockwise circulation around that high, it's really kept it away and it's going to continue to do so. And it does look like New England will get a bit of a break from that smoke just over the next couple of days. As for our rain chances, got a little bit, a little bit back in the picture. 
10% chance on Monday, 20% Tuesday through Friday of next week. So most of next week, we do expect to see just a few little pop-up downpours, brief thunderstorms on the radar, especially closer to the Gulf Coast, but even locally it is possible. Nothing to get excited about, obviously, but at least there's something, and cross your fingers for your neighborhood, as there is just that slight chance of a few of those showers popping up here and there. Otherwise, sometimes this time of year, you know, we look to the tropics, and there's nothing out in the tropics right now that we could really tap into for any kind of moisture. But we do also look to the tropics for the African dust this time of year. And right now, the dust is far out in the Atlantic. And we go through time here with this African dust. It's going to get closer to us. And I do think that by about Wednesday of next week, Wednesday is when we could actually get a little bit of that dust in our sky. Do I anticipate it to be significant? No, not significant, but adding a little extra haze. And yes, I did have to leave you on the screen because my clicker just broke down on me. So now I'm doing it the old fashioned way, hitting space bar. 77 in the morning, 93 tomorrow afternoon. Space bar. And then by tomorrow afternoon, you about 100 in Pleasanton, 104 Catula, Del Rio, 98 the high, Lavernia and Castroville, 100. 99 tomorrow, 98 on Sunday, a mixture of sun and clouds, just typical, fairly typical early July weather. And I know the trend uh, isn't significant, but it's better than nothing, that little downward trend in temperatures. You know, we have to finish with some splooting, right? Here's a, you gotta look carefully, but in the center of the screen, that squirrel camouflages itself nicely. Maybe it's yeah. just camouflaging itself from predators or splooting at the same time. <laughs> I see it. I think it's both. Yeah. Smart squirrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Splutiflage. Although planking will... would have been better because he's on a plank of wood, but splooting. Oh, yeah. But splooting is more fun to say. True. That was dual purpose splooting. Yeah. <laughs> the buzz coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> in the town of normal illinois this dog is anything but this is rocky he just won the guinness world record for longest <laughs> tongue on a dog rocky's owner knew he had a long tongue but they didn't know there was a guinness world record for such a thing. Well, his owners applied for the record. They got in contact with Guinness. They then took Rocky to his vet to get his tongue officially measured from the end of his nose to the tip of his tongue. Rocky's tongue measured a little over five and a half inches. And now he holds a record. Yep. You lick the competition. <laughs> a lottery winner is finally getting his jackpot after somebody else tried to cash in on his luck. Massachusetts state lotto officials presented Jack Little with his $3 million check today. Little bought the ticket from a Lakeville liquor store back in January, but he accidentally left it behind. This is Justice. Unable to find the ticket, he assumed it was lost. Well, days later, two clerks who worked at the liquor store tried to cash in that winning ticket, mm. which appeared to be torn and burned. That led to an investigation and surveillance video from the store confirmed that pair did not purchase the winning ticket. This guy did. Both of those former employees are now facing charges, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I'd say so. Mars has donuts. Well, it appears to have at least one, but not one any human would want to eat. An image captured by the Mars rover Perseverance shows this mysterious donut shaped rock on the red planet's surface. Looks like a powdered donut. <laughs> The donut is one of the latest objects captured by the Super Cam Remote Micro Imager, one of the rover's cameras helping scientists see what's on the planet's surface. Scientists have a few hypotheses as to where this rock came from. They say it could be a meteorite or it could be a rock was brought to the area by a river channel. Okay, well, we're going to stick with space here. Grab a telescope, turn your eye to the sky because today is International Asteroid Day. The day marks the anniversary of a large meteor impact in Russia on June 30th, 1908. The day seeks to raise awareness of the threat posed by asteroids, as if the movie Armageddon wasn't enough, when they fall to Earth as meteors and calls for a massive increase in monitoring of asteroids around the world. Now I want to watch Armageddon. Yeah, it's a good movie. Be right back. If you looked up today, you may have seen a halo around the sun. We get these fairly frequently with the cirrus clouds overhead. They're composed of ice crystals and the way the sunlight refracts through those ice crystals. 
Sometimes you get that little 22 degree halo. Pretty cool. Thanks for watching. She have the night beat at 10.